In this video, I'm going to explain what the cycle of fifths actually are. I'll then talk you through the cycle of fifths diagram and demonstrate why this is the most important circle in the whole of music theory. This lesson is ideal for any musician who wishes to expand on their knowledge of music theory for any instrument. This is a theory-based video, so be sure to pick up your free copy of the PDF by clicking the link below this video in the description. This PDF has all the information you need to know about the circle of fifths, and it also has a copy of the circle of fifths diagram. It's very useful to have all this information written down to use alongside this video and to use for reference afterwards. First of all, what is a circle of fifths? Well, a circle of fifths is the relationship between the 12 tones of the chromatic scale, their key signatures, and also the relationship between major and minor keys. That's quite a mouthful, so I'll take this sentence apart and explain it. The 12 tones of the chromatic scale basically mean all the notes that we've got with their sharps and flats. These notes are C, C sharp and D flat, D, D sharp and E flat, E, F, F sharp and G flat, G, G sharp and A flat, A, A sharp and B flat, and B. For those of you that don't know, all the sharps have a flat name as well. So C sharp is the same as D flat, for example. These notes are called enharmonic notes, and the best way to understand them is to look at the piano keys. So between C and D, for example, there's one black note, and that note can be C sharp or D flat. Don't get too hung up as to why at the moment, and we need to know a bit more information, but I'll explain more later on in the video. Also, you may have noticed from the piano keys that we haven't got any black notes between E and F and B and C. The second part of the explanation about what the circle of fifths are mentioned key signatures. Now we see key signatures at the start of every piece of music. The key signature informs you about what sharps and flats to expect in that piece of music and we can work out from the key signature and the chords what the key of the piece of music is. The last part of the explanation mentioned major and minor keys. Now each major key has a relative minor key and the relative minor and the major share the same key signature and the same common chords. But I'll talk more about that later on in the video. This is the circle of fifths diagram. We'll look at the outer ring first. We move around the circle in a clockwise direction and start on C. You can see G is after C if we go clockwise, and G is a fifth above C. This means that if we play a scale of C, a major or minor scale, G is the fifth note. A fifth looks like this on a bass fretboard. If we continue round the circle, next we have D, and D is a fifth above G. So you get the idea, as we move clockwise around the circle, we go up a fifth with each letter. For the purposes of this video, we'll stop at B, which is at the bottom of the circle. If you carry round the circle, you'll eventually start having two letters in the same segment, a sharp letter and a flat letter. In these cases, composers can choose whether they want to write in the sharp or flat key. If we again start at the top of the circle at C, and this time move round anti-clockwise, then the next letter we have is F, and F is a fifth below C. It's worth mentioning at this point that as well as descending in fifths, we could also be ascending in fourths, so going up in fourths, as F is a fourth above C. But for the sake of not overcomplicating things at this stage, we'll just talk about fifths in this video. So F is a fifth below C, then B flat is a fifth below F, and so on. The letters around the outer circle represent all the major keys. Now if you look in the inner circle, you'll see all the minor keys. Minor keys are related to major keys and each minor key has a relative major key. This means that they share the same key signature and primary chords. These minor keys in the inner circle also go around in fifths, the same way as the outer circle. And from the circle, you can also see what its relative major key is. So the relative major to A minor is C major. 
and the relative major to E minor is G minor. F minor's relative major is A flat major, F sharp minor's relative major is A major and so on. It's useful knowing what key a piece of music is in because then you know what common calls you're likely to see. A major key and its relative minor will share the same common chords. Another great thing about the circle of fifths diagram is that all the common chords of one key are in one quarter segment of the circle. So if we look at C, the common chords for C major are C, D minor, E minor, F, G and A minor. And you can see all those chords in the top quarter of this circle. The common chords in A minor are A minor, C, D minor, E minor, F and G. And again, they're all in that top quarter. This works for any key. The common chords for A major are A, B minor, C sharp minor, D, E and F sharp minor. And the relative minor to A major is F sharp minor. And F sharp minor's common chords are F sharp minor, A, B minor, C sharp minor, D, E and F sharp minor. Again, you can find these six chords in a segment on the right hand side of the circle. If we travel clockwise around the circle, then we can see the sharp keys. And if we travel anti-clockwise around the circle, then we'll see the flat keys. As we travel clockwise around the circle from C, we add a sharp on with each letter. So C starts with no sharps, G has one sharp, D has two sharps, etc. If we travel anti-clockwise from C, F has one flat, and B flat has two flats, E flat has three flats, etc, etc. You can find a more elaborate circle of fifth diagram that has a third circle on the outside to inform you of all the sharps and flats in each key. This may be useful to some of you, so I've put a second circle of fifths diagram with the sharps and flats around the outside on the free PDF, and you can get that below. You can get this information from the basic circle, but you have to remember how. So for the sharps, we start on F and go clockwise. Remember that in G major we have one sharp, well this is F sharp. In D major we have two sharps, these are F sharp and C sharp. And this carries on for the sharps. For the flats we start on B flat and go anti-clockwise. So remember F major has one flat, which is B flat. B major has two flats, which are B flat and E flat. And this carries on for the flats. You may remember near the beginning of the video that I mentioned enharmonic notes and how one note can have two names like C sharp and D flat. Well, as a general rule, in sharp keys, we use the sharp name and in flat keys, we use the flat name. Like these enharmonic notes, as I mentioned before, keys can also have two names. If you find G flat on the outer circle, you'll notice that it's also called F sharp. This is the section of the circle where the sharps and flat keys cross over with each other. So G flat and F sharp major sound the same, but some composers have a preference as to what key they want to write in and what will look better visually written down. This gets into a more complex area to study, but it's enough at this level just to be aware that these enharmonic notes and keys can have two names. Well, I hope at least some of these concepts in this video made sense to you. Keys and enharmonic notes can be a confusing area to learn, so I suggest you spend some time learning the information in this video and also look at the circle of fifths diagram on the PDF. This circle has a lot of uses and so much information about music theory contained within it. Remember that you can download the free PDF with all this information in it by clicking the link in the description below this video. And you might also want to check out my Understanding Music Theory playlist here on YouTube that's got lots of other videos in it to help you with this topic. Also, remember to subscribe to Greg Space Shed here on YouTube by clicking the red subscribe button below. Please ask me if you've got any questions about the content of this video, no matter how silly the questions might seem to you. This is a hard area to learn initially, but it's well worth learning music theory and you'll thank yourself later down the line. You can leave a comment below this video or head over to my website, gbshed.com. I've got a contact page there and a lot more base resources that might be of some interest to you. This is Greg from Greg Space Shed. I'll see you in the next video.